In today's match review, we're going to be talking about one Russell with the other. Yes, if you didn't get that short introduction, well, it was Russell Mania, as the KKR fans like to call it. We have Russell Arnold to, of course, call the match. And Russell, show us your muscle, because look, Andre just did. So it's only fair that you do, sir. Oh, well, Avanish, I don't have to try. You can see them anyway. You know, there you go. <laughs> All right, because look, at the end of the day, Simon Dool was asking Andre Russell post match, saying, be honest with us, how many of those eight sixes did you muscle? And he said, you know what, I just met it once from the middle of the bat. So the seven was pretty much his muscle, which just shows you the man and his strength. But jokes apart, Russ, it was truly his night. It, it certainly was. I mean, the target was well within and it was beautifully set up. I thought uh, the, uh, the Punjab Kings missed a trick in how they went about their business in the field. Once they had got uh, the KKR down to four wickets, um, they should have gone for it. But they sat back a wee bit and once uh, Russell got going, there's no stopping him. There's a certain way uh, that you look to control him. They had an ace in which they should have used. That was Rabada, uh, Pepper, Henry Russell. That's what teams do. Lasit Malinga, for instance, Jasprit Bumrah, they have success against him because they bowl a particular line and a particular length. Um, and um, the Punjab Kings certainly did have the tools, but they didn't go there or rather go wide of the stumps and get him to hit to areas that he's not used to. So once uh, they clawed themselves back in, they let him out. But uh, you can't take anything away from the man. The way he was going, even if uh, there was another 60-70 to get, he would have made it because uh, he was striking it so well. He's always been brutally honest about his power and how he uh, backs himself because uh, even miss hits go for six and he knows that. And that's why he does go for it. And he's a very difficult customer to handle. You got to nip it in the bud when he comes to the wicket. Yeah, I like the uh, choice of words there from you. The puns as well. Brutally honest about his batting. He was brutal, all right? Let's just, of course, recap this match through the summary scorecard. Because at the end of the day, Punjab fans look back in dismay. Because they got off to a relatively all right start. But then it was almost uh, a domino effect in terms of wickets. And... They huffed and puffed their way to a modest score, you would say. And then KKR, like Russell just said, 51 for 4 when Andre walked out. And boy, he just took the game away from them. So let's start chronologically. And we'll start with your fellow compatriot, a little boy from Sri Lanka called Bhadaka. Because he, 9 ball 32, it's an absolute joke for him. He's taking to the IPL like a duck to water, Russ. He's not a little boy. He's in his 30s and he is uh, on the bigger side when you look at Sri Lankans. But it was impressive to see how he um, played his shots. But uh, now this is where it comes down to, uh, Avnish. Uh, what was the plan of the Punjab Kings? How many runs did they think they needed? They battered like they thought they needed 200, 220 to have a chance. So that's where it gets tricky. Yes, that's how it seems. Because the dew comes in and uh, teams chasing have found it easy. So the target you set for yourself is so important. And they were going short a ball. And that's what Banuka Rajapaksa also did. Well, you can afford to have one player go like that and give you the, uh, the momentum or the direction that you need. But from then on, you need to build on it. But unfortunately, at the end of the sixth over, for the Punjab Kings, they had Liam Livingston. And they had uh, Raj Baba trying to find his feet. So they were able to bowl. KKR were able to bowl dot balls. The pressure built. Picked up another wicket here and there. And they were all over the, the Punjab Kings. And even Shah Rukh Khan. Or you looked at all the batsmen to follow. They were going real hard. As if they always thought they needed 220. But this pitch looked a lot drier. There was grip. Whenever the KKR bowlers picked up a wicket or broke the rhythm of the batsman, it was with a change of pace. Even the seamers, Team Southy for that matter. And then the spinners, you let them in. Uh, Sunil Narayan and um, Varun Chakravarti, they got those variations. They'll pick up wickets in the middle overs. So you found yourself with your back against the wall. So it's, it's hard in a 20-over game where you say assess your target and sometimes the pitch is not there. You've got to adjust and go to a target that might be suited. Probably this was more of 160, 165 wicket and uh, uh, Punjab Kings would have given their bowlers a lot more of a chance. Uh, but you, you got pushed back. But Rajapaksa hitting it cleanly, it's hard to say 
that he probably could have gone on three sixes and then trying to go on further because that could be his role and he did it beautifully for that matter but from then on um, Shikhar Dhawan got out to that slow ball and um, I, I also must say Shreya Sayer captained that team really well because whenever they wanted a wicket where well, he brought in those attacking options Umesh Yadav is an attacking option he, he brought him in to pick up wickets and that's what you do by picking up wickets is how you control the opposition so uh, well done Shreya Sayer too yeah, I mean, you mentioned Umesh Yadav there. He was literally at his best to us. You take a look at the figures, 4 for 23. He hasn't pocketed better in the IPL. A word on him and a word on KKR finding their power play man in Umesh. Yes, I mean, he got the ball to move early and then he bowls at brisk pace. So you must give him that freedom to go out and take wickets because that's the type of bowler he is. Probably not the best death bowler that you have and hence use him early. Uh, Liam Livingston at the wicket and at a strange time, Shreya Sayer went to Umesh Yadav and he delivered. Had him caught in the deep. I mean, um, uh, Tim Saudi, amazing the catches that he's taking. We've seen it time and time again, uh, him picking up um, catches like that. But the amount of uh, distance he had to cover, uh, was it to pick up um, Shah Rukh Khan? Yes, uh, I think it was uh, un unbelievable stuff. And that's what you do. I mean when you're a champion player when you're an overseas player trying to make a difference to your team you get a sniff you go for it uh, so um, umesh yadav four wickets once again and i think um Shreyas Ayers understood how he should use yadav yeah you mentioned tim saudi over there he also became the first new zealander to back 252 20 wickets so congratulations tim on that but let's now move on to, of course, the chase. And KKR were always kind of showing that intent because remember we spoke about the Baz McCullum manual. But you mentioned Rabada there. But I want to, of course, ask you about Rahel Chair because he was absolutely brilliant. Two for 13. He also starred in that RCB game where he saw all of his teammates go for a lot of runs. One for 22 in that game. But this one, two for 13. You can't ask for more, especially with a double wicket maiden also in the mix. Oh, he was brilliant to start off with. But I would ask for more, Avanish, because um, uh, come that fourth over, probably, uh, you needed him to search for a wicket. But I thought the line that he bowled was a little bit more defensive, the speed, the length. Because Andre Russell had got that uh, game under control. Yes, Rahul Chahar did try to get the ball to rip. But for me, he probably should have looked to bowl a bit more of an attacking line and try to get that ball to spin. That's how uh, he would have invited um, um, Andre Russell to probably go for that big one because bowling that wider line and making it hard to play shots at that stage was not going to get him that wicket because Russell had it under control and so was uh, uh, Sam Billings. He was knocking it around. They were very comfortable in where they were. And hence, in that over, I probably would have asked for a little bit more from Chahar, but uh, the trick was missed when um, the fourth wicket fell and... Um, um, Agarwal did not go to Rabada at that point attacking um, the right-hander with Rabada and Chahir would have got that wicket maybe he thought look we're in the game another wicket or two will drift and we'll get through well we, we, uh, we know now in T20 cricket a game is never over especially when you have players like um, uh, uh, Andre Russell I mean, I mean any Russell around uh, you, you don't sit back so Andre Russell there 70 of 31 I mean, that's what he'll do to you so you got to get him out and you got to keep getting batsmen out and uh, look to pick up those um, uh, X, X factor bowlers into the attack to do that job for you even if you have to do it a little early yeah let me pick your mind further about Raul Chair in terms of just donning the Indian selectors hat for now, Russ. The fact that the World Cup is not too far away. Would you go in with someone like Rahul Chahel, Yuzwen the Chahel, or Ravi Bishnoi? Because that's a real conundrum, but a good headache. It's a good headache to have because you have various options. And uh, I don't think it's a time to make that decision right now. Uh, yes. I would throw Kuldeep Yadav also into the mix. The World Cup is in Australia. So how many spinners are you going to need? Is it like in the subcontinent where you need the two, three spinners again? So these are questions that will be answered as you go on. So definitely in the mix, but a lot more to prove for Rahul Chahar. But he was impressive. I mean, I, I was a little critical, but uh, that's to make an X-factor or, or, or a difference in this game if uh, Punjab Kings needed to claw themselves back in. But 
the way he bowled those first three overs was, was brilliant to watch. The line was more uh, middle and leg when he was bowling at that stage, looking to rip it through. But that last over, if you notice, he went a lot wider and shorter. That was more defensive. Uh, that's that's my point. But you're, you're definitely right. There are plenty of options that you need to look at. You want me to make a decision right now? I'll go with the experience of Yuzvendra Chahel for the moment. Okay. Love it. Like we always know, the Raslan doesn't sit in the fence, so we love his pointed answers there. Right, let's see if he can answer this one. Because look, Punjab fans will be scratching their head. They bamboozled RCB the other night in the chase. But defending totals are always going to be their problem, especially with the attack looking toothless right now. Who I mean, who goes out for someone like Johnny Besto? Will it be Livingston? Will it be Odin Smith? Or because Baraka, of course, has been in tremendous form. How do you see it chop and change from a Punjab perspective going forward? Yeah, Banuka looks like a player who can play a role for you in, in getting those quick runs and giving that momentum. So, Besto will come in because of his experience. That I'm, I'm very sure about that. Um, it, it could be Liam Livingston because um, you need to balance that uh, team. Odin yeah. Smith goes out. Uh, you don't have um, a seamer. So, you've got to make other changes. And I don't think the Punjab Kings, in terms of their local players, have that luxury. Yeah. So it, it would probably be for Liam Livingston. Basically, look at it like Englishman for Englishman. What, what other way to look at that? Uh, but all in all, again, the other day, <laughs> I was a bit defensive of uh, um, the Punjab Kings bowling because even the opposition went for lots of runs and it's hard to judge in a game. But even today, 137, that's not a lot to defend. Um, and, and hence, you're asking for a lot from them. But yes, toothless. Yeah, 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 I get where you're coming from and uh, they need to use their resources a lot better. Love it, Russ. It's amazing. We heard uh, or rather saw Anil Kumble and Mayan kind of just chat a little bit in Canada, kind of reviewing the game. But that's, of course, done and dusted here on Cricket.com with Russell Arnold. You can, of course, catch him on his YouTube channel and his social media because there's some fantastic uh, footage that we've been putting it out on Cricket.com. That's all we have. Thanks so much for watching. It's a goodbye from Russell Arnold, of course. And, of course, we at Cricket.com. Good night and goodbye.